Starship pulls a psych on the test stand. Starlink Mini-er is now a thing. SpaceX gets gay. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. After a couple delays at the start of the work week, Wednesday came around and Starship 25, the next ship to attempt a launch to orbit, was cryofilled for what was expected to be a static fire of its Raptor engines. But 30 minutes after chilling the engines, an abort was called and she was detanked. Of course, no reason was provided. SpaceX typically keeps such things close to the chest, but another attempt could be made as early as Tuesday next week. Elon tweeted on Tuesday this week that he is expecting the second launch to occur in six to eight weeks. So January it is. Nah, I kid. If I'm being ethereal, I speculate September. Place your bets in the comments below. Outside of government bureaucracy and lawsuit happy hippies, upgrades to stage zero will most likely be the thing that holds the launch up. But renovations are swimming right along. For example, installation of the Starship splash pad under the OLM could begin in the next week or two. This news just broke yesterday evening. NASA announced they are working with seven U.S. companies to meet future commercial government needs, ultimately benefiting human spaceflight in the U.S. commercial low Earth orbit economy. And one of said companies is SpaceX, which will be collabing with NASA to build what sounds like a Starship space station. That's right, a Starship converted into a station in space. A quote, in space low Earth orbit destination element. That's all we know at this time, but one can easily speculate that this may be one of the direction NASA heads once the ISS is officially out of commission in a handful of years. Although one can expect they'll want it up and running before that time. On Monday morning, Falcon took off from Slick 40, Florida, carrying 52 Starlink satellites to the fifth orbital shell. The booster flew for its ninth time, landing on Just Read the Instructions, sailing sailless on the Atlantic Ocean. For those of you wanting Starlink service for yourself, but for whatever reason can't have it, SpaceX has your back with a one-fourth scale model of the user terminal available on their online store. Starlink service not included, or possible. The Starlink for Ants action figure does no action. Go figure. But it also doesn't come with cats. So what's not to like? Just a handful of hours after Monday's Starlink launch, another Falcon lifted off from a ground cloudless Vandenberg but still got to lick some clouds at altitude while hoisting 72 spacecraft for this eighth transporter mission. All were eventually deployed beginning around an hour after leaving the pad, and here's a quick and convenient time lapse of most of the larger deployments. Twas the ninth mission for this booster as well, boosting back for a landing on the coast. Let's see that in an instant replay. This touchdown marks SpaceX's 200th touchdown of a Falcon booster. The company shared a visual of all 239 missions since 2008. About 90% of the last 100 missions since 2022 consisted of flight proven first stages. But the contracts keep coming in for even more Falcon fun. Last week, the U.S. Space Force gave six of the additional 12 National Security Space Launch Phase II missions to SpaceX, specifically one for USS SSFF-31, a classified mission, and five Space Development Agency missions to LEO. Slated to lift off no earlier than 2025 and all six totaling 541 million Musk bucks, formerly known as your taxpayer bucks. And this week, NASA awarded SpaceX with a task order to launch two CubeSat launch initiative missions, also to launch no earlier than 2025. The two career-related stories making the rounds this week are a hovercraft pilot position available within the company, so up to 10 employees at a time can be transported to and fro South Padre Island and Boca Chica where Starbase is stationed. Be sure to apply now if being a swamp ferry is of interest to you. And there's news of a young Sheldon Cooper joining the ranks at SpaceX. 14-year-old Kieran Quasi, who graduated this week from SCU, has been hired on as a Starlink software engineer. He wrote on his LinkedIn, quote, I will be joining the coolest company on the planet one of the rare companies that did not use my age as an arbitrary and outdated proxy for maturity and ability. Well, three things about that. First, congratulations, Banzai. That's quite the achievement. Second, it's not arbitrary. Many kids his age are too busy crusting up their mom's bath towels and can't even read at a basic level. This kid is the exception, as respectable as it is. And third, SpaceX is cool, but it's not without its faults. So guard yourself, kid, especially if they place you in California, where lib dirt policies have turned cities into crime and drug-infested hellscapes. 
Last week, I gave SpaceX the carrot for not yet partaking in Pride Month, but sadly this week, I have to give them the stick because over the weekend, they once again took part in a Pride Parade. Of course, in Hollywood, another West Coast cesspool, which to be clear is their right to do, although that doesn't make it right. Hey, fair is fair. If they're allowed to have parades, then I'm allowed to shame them. In fact, last year, SpaceX also sponsored a quote, child-friendly drag event, which included men under the sinister delusion they're women dancing seductively in front of little kids. Although the left thinks of themselves as progressives, the pride movement is of course just backwards thinking. There's nothing new about such immoral perversions infecting cultures and bringing entire nations to rubble. The wisest king in history once wrote, pride goeth before destruction, something you would think a rocket company might want to consider. I'm sure a Martian colony mixed with unapologetic groomers and pedos and the mentally ill can only benefit humanity. Diversity is our strength after all, just not diversity of mind. Dissenters aren't welcome, which to be clear is more than fine with me as woke space derps ally themselves with the demonic. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Since there isn't much else worth covering this week, let's take this time to talk about a spacefaring game that some of you may be interested in getting your hands on as we wait for KSB2 to not suck. Bethesda Studios' newest franchise, Starfield, has been all the rage amongst game nerds since its reveal a few years ago. And earlier this week, the developers showed off 45 minutes of gameplay during an Xbox Direct event. Check it. Starfield is a role-playing game that allows users to buy, steal, and build spaceships so they can explore a virtual universe consisting of not one world, but more than a thousand procedurally generated and handcrafted planets. The core agenda is to find artifacts scattered around the galaxy, leading players to the answer of life, the universe, and everything. So I guess it will either lead you to a PDF of the Bible or 42 copies of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But if the game's take on the meaning of existence is of no interest to your simple Skittles and Diet Coke existence, you can always bail off the main storyline and go exploring, fraternizing, colonizing, or genociding. Oh, oh, yeah, space guns! Starfield releases in September on Xbox and PC, and if it's any good, I'll do some gameplay on my other channel, link in the description. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for joining me. Much love to those supporting the show with their hard-earned coins. Please clap. But a nominal weekend to all. And until next Friday, Godspeed. Godspeed.